Hello students. Today we are going to study about the regulation of sex differentiation and development. Now, we have discussed how the determination, genetic determination of sex and differentiation. Now, how it is regulated? Now, normal sex differentiation and development proceeds sequentially. So, first we have uh, there is a genetic establishment that is normal sex is established at fertilization and that determines gonadal differentiation. So gonadal differentiation is decided at fertilization and that is purely genetic. Genital differentiation however is dependent upon the gonadal differentiation right genital external or genital depends upon gonadal differentiation. It is quite, quite obvious that Y chromosome plays a key role in testicular differentiation of male development and the absence of the testicular differentiation results in over Ovarian differentiation or female development. So, fetal functional test is by secreting mullerian inhibiting substance or hormone and testosterone regulates this activity. Now, hormonal regulation of male development. So, we have many uh, uh, hormone which regulates it. Let's see how male development is regulated. Now, there are two principal components of male of phenotypic development. Phenotyping is external feature, right? Wolfian duct differentiation and virilization of the urogenital signs. So, Wolfian duct, okay? You can remember, uh, I said that uh, Wolfian duct, you can remember that male are wolf. So, so you can just remember male development, Wolfian duct, right? And the virilization of the urogenital signs and the development of external genital are under control of testosterone and THT that is dihydrotestosterone it is uh, the testosterone reacted upon by the enzymes we will see later on and will convert into the the most if androgen in the human body that is the THT viralization of the male embryo is mediated by three hormones so the the male embryo becomes male um, that is uh, controlled by the three hormones that is MIS, mullerian inhibiting substance, testosterone, and DST, dehydrotestosterone. Right. So, let's talk about the MIS or mullerian duct regression factor. They are also other name MRF, mullerian duct regression factor or mullerian inhibiting substance or anti mullerian hormone AMH. So, all three are the same is produced by very important sertoli cells so this is produced by sertoli cell important uh, it is polypeptides in nature and belong to the family of tissue growth factor so this is a tissue growth factor type of hormone secreted by sertoli cells and in a male child 4 nanogram per ml is there but this is reached only by after one or two years of age and then it's declining uh, MIS is also detected in girls, so this is very unnatural or unusual things, but very small amount can be detected in girls in very low quantity and probably secreted by granulosa cells. That is not certainly seen, but it's granulosa cells from where it is seen. What is the function of MIS? This causes, at this name suggests, regression factor is also there, mullerian regression factor, so it regresses or involvate you know or destroy you can say in very layman term mullerian duct mullerian duct is responsible for the formation of uterus fallopian tube and upper part of the vagina that regression of mullerian duct is there by MIS and thus prevents development of uterus fallopian tube and upper vagina continued it also causes it helps in the growth of wolfian duct helps the testosterone in virilization of Wolfian duct and its derivatives. So it helps. Uh, in later period, this MIS helps descent of the test. So descent of test is later of period help the testosterone to work on different Wolfian duct and it itself regresses the Mullerian duct. The second hormone is testosterone, which is secreted by the leading cells of fetus testis, and the stimulant here is HCG, human choreographic hormone. The SCG will stimulate testis to produce uh, testosterone from the leading cells. For function of testosterone, it causes unilateral virilization 
of the Wolfian duct. So it it converts Wolfian duct to vas deferens, epididymis, vas deferens, ejaculatory duct, seminal vesicle by its local paracrine action. So that means paracrine means there and then suffocate. It does not go through the blood to somewhere else at other endocrine gland, uh, gland would do. It will there and then secrete. That is a paracrine action. That is that is it maintains a local high concentration. And how does it do so? How does it maintain local concentration? Because testosterone has a great affinity for the androgen binding protein, and this is continuously released by the Sertoli cells. And that's why uh, the, the more androgen binding proteins are there in the local environment, the more and more testosterone are bind, bound to that protein. Now, in a bound form, testosterone flows along the Wolfian duct and released from in the binding protein as its site of action. So wherever it is necessary, the, the there will be unbinding from the uh, you know androgen binding protein. So that that's how it maintains the local concentration. Let's talk about the DST, that is the active form of the testosterone. It uh, it is formed at the site of the action of testosterone. So it's not uh, present in the testes. Where uh, wherever you have you want action of DST, first of all you have to supply it with testosterone. And in the tissue, there are uh, uh, enzymes that will convert the testosterone to dihydrotestosterone and then the action of the DST. The target organ contains an active enzyme that is 5 alpha reductase, very important enzyme to be remembered. 5 alpha reductase, which converts testosterone to DST. Function of DST masculinization of the prostate and external genitalia. Masculinization of the prostate and external genitalia. How does it act? I mean, how other different uh, androgen acts? They act by androgen receptor, which is in the nucleus. So it is a, the 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 nucleus. The receptor are for this hormone. They are present, or in fact, androgen. Androgen is present in the nucleus. In the intranuclear receptor, you can see uh, our target organ or or the following testosterone promotion DST. The receptor is common for both testosterone and DST and thus resulting in the formation of hormone receptor complex which interact with the chromatin. So DST is the most potent natural androgen, most potent natural androgen and is therefore necessary for fertilization. So if you castrate, I mean if you remove the fetal testes in an early embryonic stage that will prevent the formation of the male genitalia and thus result in a female like development. However, castration of the male fetus at a later stage does not affect the male differentiation. That means the gonadal differentiation is very important step for the genital differentiation, right? So you can say here uh, how 22x, 22y uh, from the male sperm, chromosomal sex differentiation is there, uh, 44xy zygote has been formed, okay? Now, test determining factor or chromosome y. They have a bipotential gonads here, neutral sex analysis. Now, embryonic testes will produce MIS or AMH, anti mullerian hormone or mullerian inhibiting substance that will cause mullerian duct regression that will lead to male genetic internal genitalia. Internal genitalia will develop, Wolfian duct activation will be there by the and this Wolfian duct activation will also cause male genitalia, internal genitalia formation. That will this. Genital that is the testis will produce testosterone and by the effect of 5 alpha reductase, this will DST, DST will cause male external genitalia, male behavior, and adult testis will also secret testosterone that will also cause male secondary sexual character. So, same thing in the female. The female the, you do not have any MIS or AMS, so naturally this will go towards the female type of gonads and female type of. Sex, uh, secondary sexual character, right? Here, mullerian duct will be there, no MIS, so mullerian duct activation will be there, no testosterone, so Wolfian duct regression will be there because Wolfian duct will act only when there is a local local testosterone is there. When, when there is an absence of local testosterone, Wolfian duct will regress in the absence of local testosterone. No DST, so 
female internal genitalia, female external genitalia, female behavior, and female secondary sexual character, right? You can see here how this grenade trap in, in uh, uh, every every hormone helps. You can take a screenshot of this. Now, since we have finished this uh, this uh, differentiation, uh, de uh, determination, and regulation, so now we come to a clinical aspect: disorder of sexual development. So we can have a defect in sex chromosomes leading to genetic abnormalities. We can have hormonal abnormalities leading to the defect in gonadal differentiation or genital differentiation. Okay, chromosomal abnormality. What chromosomal abnormalities can be there? It can be trisomy. It can be monosomy. It can be chromosomal abnormality with more than three chromosomes. It can be triploidy. Abnormalities in number of chromosomes during crossing over the process and mosaicism. Right. So let's talk about a trisome. The chromosomal abnormality usually arises during the gametogenesis. This type of chromosomal abnormality usually arises during the gametogenesis when the gametes are being formed. And this is due to the non disjunction of the sex chromosomes. The you know, chromosome has to be disjunction to form haploid number of the gametes. Uh, but uh, if there is a non disjunction, so there can be trisomy. How? Non distinction is a phenomenon in which pair of chromosomes could not be separated during the meiotic division and may go to the same pole. And if that gamete with the extra chromosome fertilized with, that will lead to the extra uh, chromosome pair apart from the normal. So, resulting in 24 chromosomes instead of 23. So, haploid we have to have 23 chromosomes. This after this abnormality, this will have a 24 chromosomes. At fertilization by this gamete with 24 chromosome normal, we have not 46 but 47 chromosomes in the zygote. There being three sex chromosomes instead of one of the normal pair. Right. The presence of extra X or extra Y will give rise to many syndrome, and this is with the abnormal development, mental retardation, abnormal growth. So, what different Phenotype or genotype can be found. Individual with XXX. Suppose a gamete with 2X and a gamete with 1X normal uh, combined, this will form XXX. This, this is re referred to as super female, but not, there is nothing su super about them uh, because there is a poor sexual development, infantilism, a scanty menstrual, and mental retardation. The, the person with XXY. XXY of the chromosomes is known as clean filter syndrome. It's abnormal male due to the presence of Y chromosome. Uh, it is the most common sex chromosome disorder. Has an incidence in one in five hundred. So it is the most common. This is the frequently asked question. Most common sex disorder. It occurs in two forms: classical form and mosaic form. The classical form is due to chromosomal non disjunction phenomenon during the gametogenesis. And the mosaic form, the classical form, usual what happens. And that mosaic form is due to the chromosomal non disjunction after fertilization when zygote undergo mitotic division. So that was in the meiotic division, the classical form. And this is in the mitotic, so this, this is also known as mitotic non disjunction. And the classical form is also known as meiotic non disjunction. Right. You can see how this was a normal pattern meiosis occurs meiosis first and meiosis two meiosis first may yaha par disjunction ho gaya hai ye lekin yaha par kya hua ye pair jo hai tuta nahi it will n plus 1 it should be n minus 1 but it is n plus 1 so there is absence of any chromosomes here so this is abnormal same thing you can see here this is non disjunction. This is a meiotic non disjunction again 44 xx hai, 22 xx hua, 22. Oh, but the kuch nahi. Because the both xs goes into the one gamete. So, this will, if if it will uh, combine with x, it will be 44 xxx, and if it combine with x chromosomes. Uh, 23 pair, so it will be for uh, it will be 44 x 4 right? 
so so 22x and 22xx will cause 44xxx 22o means nothing 22x normal uh, sperm will cause 44xo right here again if 22y will combines with this this will come xxy and if 22y combines with it it will got 44y so so there can be different you know uh, number a xxx is known as super female number b is 44xo is known as gonadal dysgenesis or turner syndrome 44xxy this is known as klinefelter syndrome or seminiferous dysgenesis 44yo this is lethal monosomy this does not survive in type and death over time okay let's move to other what are the characteristic feature of klinefelter syndrome not satai kabhi kabhi is called klinefelter syndrome in a person with klinefelter syndrome there poor development of testis with hallucination of destruction of the seminiferous tube leading to sterility so no seminiferous tube no testosterone or okay, sterility will be there so this is also known as seminiferous dysgenesis patient has normal male internal genitalia and external genitalia so we have testis we have external genitalia feature patients are usually tall because of growth of lo lower body segment obese gynecomastia that is the best in male the time of puberty or afterwards patient has a sign of sexual immaturity that is secondary sexual character of poorly developed that is pubic hair as sparse very few penis tends to be small size and testes are very small of a peanut size right other feature will include low to normal plasma testosterone level high plasma level of gonadotropin because testosterone is not there low in quantity so it will have a positive uh, you know feedback uh, effect so there will be more lh and fsh high plasma level of estradiol okay and positive sex chromatin you can see this as a kelly filter syndrome tall stature feminine stigmata a uh, bilateral gynecomastia small size of external genitalia height you can see 6.5 down syndrome also known as mono mongolism is a example of autosomal chromosome trisomy 21st chromosome so if they get trisomy of 21st chromosome specifically that will lead to down syndrome monosomy monosomy when both chromosomes of a pair go to one gamete the other gamete resulting from such division has only 22 chromosome and fertilization the zygote form will have 45 chromosome hence a pair of is represented by single chromosome that is called monosome so when a pair is represented by single chromosome which is called monosome depending upon the presence of x and y which which is will fertilize there will be either female phenotype 44 xo or a male phenotype 44 y the best known example of monosome disorder is the turner syndrome 44 other example is 44 y 44 xo is the turner syndrome characteristic feature of turner syndrome patient's chromosomal pattern is 44 xo y chromosome is absent hence patient is phenotypically female nothing about doubt about that this is one in 2500 incidence rate and there is a ovarian dysgenesis because of xo karyotype because of xo karyotype there is a ovarian dysgenesis ovary ovary are destroyed normal female internal and external genitalia are present that is a female phenotype is there external or internal both female but puberty is delayed though the female type of sexual development but the characteristic characterized by the scanty menstruation so menstruation will be scanty some, uh, sometime no menstruation that is amenorrhea primary infertility cannot produce children amestia means undeveloped breast even one can say there is no breast other important associated feature with mental retardation can also be there uh, dwarfism is there the characteristic feature if you ask that is a web neck very important web neck 
uh, that is web neck means fold of the skin on the side of the neck uh, low hairline ptosis that is drooping of the eyelids epicanthus that is the low set ear the the both ear will be downwards low set micrognathia means small jaw and there will be coction of the aorta aorta will be cocked it's very little sometimes the 44 yo to little hota hai it cannot survive uh, you know even intrauterine life andar mein mar jata hai okay this is the trader syndrome you can you can there is a ovarian dysgenesis and the the patient is short stature web neck okay undeveloped underdeveloped sex, sexual characters okay msti you can see underdeveloped breast chromosomal abnormality with more than 3 chromosomes such chromosomes are present either with x x x y x x x y and double x double y double x double x this chromosomal pattern will be there but uh, more the x chromosome more the mental retardation triploidy sometimes gametes have haploid number of chromosomes therefore zygotes of form at the time of fertilization will have 46 plus 23 69 chromosomes okay so this condition is called trip triploidy and they are generally born dead during cross over period process also there can be chromosomal abnormality like translocation there can be deletion chromosomal pair loss duplication inversion okay all these abnormal, abnormal uh, crossover process can also lead to the abnormalities mosaicism mosaicism means during the cell division normal normally the centromere splits longitudinally but here if the uh, if the centromere splits transversely abnormally so there will be two dissimilar chromosomes okay so that is known as mosaicism or isochromosomes the, how to diagnose chromosome abnormality so we can have uh, amniocentesis early diagnosis in utero if even the uh, baby is not born you can you can diagnose it amniocentesis we have to collect fluid amniotic fluid by inserting a needle into the amniotic cavity through the anterior abdominal wall and that fluid are examined for the fetal cells and by examining the fetal cell we can know the chromosomal abnormalities cv sampling that is cornea corneus villus chorionic villus sampling in early pregnancy fetal cells are obtained by needle biopsy of the chorionic villi present in the uh, you know placenta no other hormone other abnormality is the hormonal abnormality i discussed in hormonal regulation of the sexual development at that androgen secreted by the fetal cells fetal testes are essential for male development in genetic male fetuses but genetic female when exposed to androgen in the 8 to 13 week agar genetic female hai xx hai agar usko hum log androgen se expose karte 8 to 13 week of gestation can show male like development the most common development disorder due to hormonal dis are pseudo hormone hormophoretic the most common development disorder due to hormonal most, most common hormonal abnormalities are pseudo hormophoretism pseudo hermaphroditism it means individual having genotype that means the gonads of one sex in the testis ovaries and genitalia of other sex testis rahega lekin genitalia female ka rahega theek hai is tarah ka it occurs in two form female pseudo and male pseudo female pseudo female pseudo the condition associated with the female pseudo are congenital paralyzing adrenal hyperplasia of fetal adrenal cell excess of maternal androgen okay so adrenal hyperplasia of fetal adrenal cell agar fetal adrenal cell ka hyperplasia hoga kis tarah to androgen jyada secret hoga maternal androgen agar jyada secret hota hai wo fetal ke andar chala jayega iatrogenic that is the following with androgen treatment or a synthetic progestinal drug all this condition can lead to the uh, female pseudo what is the characteristic feature genotypically the individual is female gonads and internal genitalia is 
feminine line, like ovary, ovary duct, and uterus are present. But prepubertal age, masculinization occurs in the form of diamond shaped pubic hair and development of penis. So, pubic hair, diamond shape, and development of penis is also there. Increased plasma level of testosterone and androgen. If serum blood level, then plasma level of testosterone and androgen level is increased. So you can see very well acknowledge here the the diamond shape pubic here male pseudo in this condition genetically it is male xy but feminization occurs that is a female internal external genitalia male pseudo result from the following condition how it is resulted when there is androgen resistance okay or receptor androgen ka receptor is bad defective testicular development ya congenital 70 alpha hydroxy jo jo ki important hai formation of androgen hum log ne synthesis padha tha hai na pregenolon se kaise androgen banta hai congenital blockage of pregenolon formation pregenolon ek ek common ye hai kisi bhi steroids ya androgen banne ke liye wahi absent hai various other type of non hormonal abnormality androgen resistance what is androgen resistance it means androgen level are normal but cannot exert their effect. Why? Because receptor uh, receptor is defective. When there is a deficiency of enzyme, alpha reductase in this target. So there, therefore androgen cannot be converted to DST. And when there is a mutation in androgen receptor of the genes. So the two, two things can be there. Either deficiency of the enzyme, we cannot convert androgen to the DST. Or androgenic receptor genes are defective. So, if it is mild defect, the patient is infertile and may or may not be associated with gynecomastia. Mild at the But if a complete loss of responsiveness of androgen receptor hota hai, to androgen, patient presents with testicular feminizing syndrome. That is known as testicular, you have male genetic pattern, you have testis, but then feminizing syndrome. So, what does it mean? MIS is present, testosterone is secreted as a normal or high rate. The patient present with the following feature external genitalia are of female type okay but vagina ends blindly okay sometime by surgically i have seen this case in my college of internship uh, this case was there and uh, our gynecologist teacher they had a surgery to make this vagina you know uh, you know blind means it is you know skin ke बहुत ही थोड़ा इंच एक दो इंच ही या टू और थ्री सेंटीमीटर ही रहता है उसका बंद हो जाता है उस ब्लाइंड चीज को उन्होंने कैनलाइज कर दिया था है ना तू हैव द साइकोलॉजिकल यू नो बेनिफिट दे इज नो फीमेल इंटरनल जेनेटिलिया बिकॉज़ टेस्टिकुलर हार्मोन सप्रेसेस मुलरियन डक डेरिवेटिव सो नो यूट्रस नो विडक does at puberty nervous system and hypothalamus develop as in normal female so she will it is he actually, but the mentally she is she, both physically and psychologically, it is female. There occurs primary amenorrhea due to lack of uterus. This condition cannot be diagnosed until the patient sees continuous consum. So the female thinks that she is a female, everybody thinks she is a female, but she is not menstruating. Uh, the person will uh, go to the doctor and then, then there will be ultrasound and they will come to know that there is no uterus at all. So that we, that is a you know condition called as testicular feminizing syndrome. Defective testicular development it leads to deficiency of MIS MRF, which is responsible for feminization in a genetic male individual. If there is a congenital absence of seminal alpha hydroxylase deficiency, this also enzyme converts adrenal androgen into testosterone. So in this also there is a deficiency causes feminization. Okay, all these causes feminization due to deficient testosterone if there is a congenital blockade of pregnant non because why is this so because naturally the the, the, the the god has uh, uh, created the formation development of the female type of gyro uh, right female type of pattern so if you don't have any hormone or if it if, if, if there is a uh, a deficiency of the hormone, defective of the hormone due to any cases, it will lead to a female type of problem. Pregnenolone, as we know, 
uh, androgen are formed from pregnenolone. Hence, if there is a blockade of pregnenolone formation, again feminization. So there are term known as true hermaphrodites. It's a very rare condition in which the gonads of both sexes are present and ovary of one side and testes on the other side. So rare. Um, the resulting numerous various type of phenotype, internal and external genitalia types. External genitalia are variable and predominantly male and female forms that can be seen. External genitalia opening is present on the underside of the penis in the in the predominantly male and if it is vagina in the predominantly female, hypospetias. That is known as the underside opening of the uh, you know urethra in the penis is known as hypospetias. The gonads may be located at various variable size like labiosacral fold. The gonads may be in the vaginal labiosacral fold. Labiosacral means the labia is the female part, sacral, sac uh, scrotal is the male part. So it's not uh, you know very much differentiated. So labiosacral fold. Inguinal canal may kabhi kabhi gonads ho sakta hai. Testis kabhi inguinal canal may ho sakta hai. Or in abdomen may kabhi kabhi testis ho sakta hai. Breast development occurs in 60-70% of cases of true hermaphrodites. Chromosomal examination shows mixture of 46XX and 46XY construction transition. This is cell may 46XX ho ga, this is this cell may 46XY ho ga. Sex chromatin test may or may not be positive. So this is all about the clinical aspect. True hermaphrodite. You can see very well breast development but uh, tissue development is very small it's uh, not even looking like a you know a penile or a vagina right so it's a different type of altogether feature so so thank you so much for your patience hearing i know it was too fast but it has to be and soon there will be a, a mcq semester for you all it will be notified you soon. Thank you so much.